The topic I'm going to talk about today is uh, the animation API, a new API in Qt. So first, uh, my name is uh, Thierry Bastian. I'm a software engineer at Nokia. I've been there for approximately two years now, and I live in Oslo for that. Uh, I'm also currently a member of the widget team. So my area of competence is around widgets, uh, main window, toolbars. Apart from that, I'm also working on different projects. Of course, this animation API. So I've been working uh, the past months on it, uh, doing research, development, testing with other guys. So I'm the, the contact person for this animation API. Uh, apart from that, I'm also working on the, the multimedia framework, also called Formum. And uh, there is another presentation about that on Dave Days. So first, uh, the, the contents of this, uh, this presentation. So uh, first, I will just introduce a little bit the background, why we do an animation API, what's our goal, how we achieve it. And then I will talk more about the animation itself, the animation API itself. So we have basically three things uh, when, when it comes down to, to animation. We have the states, so which define uh, for any workflow, for any animation running on your application or any state of your application, you can define different, uh, different positions or different uh, view of your, of your application. I will uh, go into more detail when I talk about it. Uh, then you have the animation themselves. So the animation is, for example, animating the position or the size, the geometry of an item, the opacity, so that you can just fade in, fade out, and so on. And the last part is the transitions. So the transition is basically just putting animations and states together. So you can define what are the animations that are run when you go from one state to another state. So initially, uh, when we started this project, um, the goal of it, which was stated in our, um, in our goals, was uh, the Qt Animation API should allow users to create dynamic animated UIs and improve the underlying Qt support for transitions. There is one thing. Um, we always work in a way that we're working on an animation API and we don't want to commit for uh, putting this uh, API into a release. And this is all, all already the case for the animation API because uh, we initially planned to, to put it in 4.5, but we found out during the development of it that it would be very short, and we didn't want to rush it. So this presentation is not about something that will be in 4.5. It's something um, that will be additional to 4.5 in a different manner, like uh, labs and a Qt solution, probably. And so this presentation is about an unfinished API. And so that's also another way that we wanted to put this animation API and show it, is that as it's unfinished, we still want to provide you with the things we've come up until now. And now you will have the possibility to uh, give feedback, play with it before it's actually finalized. Because once it's finalized, it will be in Qt. And when it's in Qt, uh, as we provide binary compatibility and source compatibility, we cannot change it anymore. And we, so we didn't feel very comfortable with that. And we have this, uh, this other solution. So as I mentioned now, um, our goal is really to, to make it into Qt. Making it into Qt means that we need a good API. A good API means that it's very small and very powerful and very easy to understand. And in our case for animation, it means that you want to, to do common animations very simple and you want it to make it possible to do complex animations. Um, complex animations could be uh, just sequences or different transitions, effects, so something very, uh, very low to the, the hardware as well with, uh, with transitions and effects. Another thing we wanted to do is as I mentioned before, we have this new concept of states for an application. So for every uh, form, depending on, on where you are, where your user are, is in your application, you can define different states so that if you want to emphasize on, on one 
uh, part of the, the, the UI, you can do that and make it, for example, bigger. This animation API is about animating, so it's mainly about uh, graphical components. So the goal is to be able to to be uh, to <coughs> the goal is to be able to to animate Q widgets, so also Q object through the Q properties, and Q graphics item on the graphics view. So a short um, introduction again about what we have today in Qt. Uh, this animation API doesn't bring uh, new functionalities. It gives you new ways of doing animations, but it's already possible to, to do animations today. And we already have that in Qt. So, um, for example, you, you have uh, lots of places where you have animations. You have, for example, the styles, the Vista styles, uh, defines different animation for the progress bar, for the checkboxes, and so on. We have the Q main window. The Q main window, when you have a Q toolbar, a Q doc widget, you just move it around, and before you actually put it in its position, final position, you get uh, some small animation that actually shows you what what's happening. Uh, we also have uh, included for graphics item specifically something that's called Q graphics item animation. So it allows you to use a queue timeline and define different transformations uh, depending on this timeline. I'll explain it a bit later, but this queue graphics item animation is, its name is a bit confusing, but it's not part of this new animation API, so it's deprecated. Um, and of course the basics of Qt, uh, when you, when you want to do animation, which you can again use today, is using Q timer and Q timeline. So Q timeline gives you just a little bit of abstraction over Q timer, and you can define different curves, and so on. So now let's start with the states. So as I mentioned earlier, the states, its whole purpose is simply uh, to, to to define different positions, maybe different uh, layouts for your whole animation. So here you can see an example. You don't have to really read it. The point is that you have two different states and those two different states will just uh, show you different aspects of the same animation. So you don't have to switch from one window to another one. It's just that you're currently doing something special and you go from one state to another one. So what about the states? First, the state, um, it can inherit from another state so that you can define properties for uh, widgets or your graphics item. And um, <coughs> you can define a value. So for each state, you can define properties and values for any object or graphics item. And if you don't want to um, reinvent or redo all the things, all, all the things all the time that you have a new state. If you have, for example, just a second state that is just a little bit different from the initial state, you, you just can make this second state inherit the first one. So you can just define that the second state is basically the first one plus or minus different uh, operation or different uh, property value pairs for, for different Q objects. Um, by default, states are just um, different object that can be activated at the same time. So you can, for example, have uh, one state that defines the position of a button and one state that defines the position of the text edit and they can completely unrelate it. Now, if you have states that define, for example, the whole layout of your application, what you can do is that you can uh, add them to a state group. The state groups works a little bit like the Q button group for radio buttons, is that it's mutually exclusive. So that when you activate one state inside a state group, if there is another one that was activated before, it will be deactivated. In addition to that, you also have um, convenient functions for the usual properties. Um, because as I said, it's basically about graphics item and Q widget, so it's something that's very graphic. And uh, th so the, the basic properties like geometry and opacity, you already have uh, built-in functions for, for, for handling that. 
Now I can show you a little demo. This one. So it's the same that you saw. <coughs> it's the same application that you saw in the um, in the, the previous slide. So you basically have one state, and you can click and click, and it just switches states. So now I will not uh, edit the code of this application because it's a bit too big for a first step. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to another application, a little demo. So this demo will be also available on the on, on labs. So basically, let's start with the beginning. What it does is that first uh, we create, of course, the queue application. Then we create uh, rectangle items. It's just re simple rectangle items. Uh, then we create a scene, not really interesting. We add these rectangle items to that scene. We create the graphics view. And then comes the interesting part. So what we want to do is that for these four uh, blocks, we want to define states for three states, for example, in this case. And for each state, we, we define that uh, we define the geometry for each of the, the, the four blocks. And as we define the geometry for each of the blocks, they should be mutually exclusive. So we add those states to a state group. So we first create the state group, then we create the state, and then we define the state. So for each state, we have four lines, like here. So this is state one. So we just set the geometry of button one, button two, button three, and button four to something that will be uh, defined by, by this state. Then we have state two, same thing, at different positions, of course, different geometry, and state three. And by default, we just activate state one. <coughs> now, to make it simple to switch, we just have a little, um, let's say, a little class that we call state switcher that takes uh, a list of, of states, which is for a state one, state two, and state three. And that will help us uh, switch from one state to the other in a random way. So then we just have uh, started a timer that will switch states every 1,250 milliseconds. And so how does it look? It look like, looks like that. So every, every one second, or nearly one second, one second and 250 milliseconds, uh, it switches the states. So we have basically three states, one in the middle, one a little bit um, exploded, and one completed to the corner. Yep. I will stick to that, um, to the, to that demo and, and add up when, when I, uh, I go through the, the other um, concepts. So now that we know what is what are states, um, we we know exactly how it works. Now uh, I will switch to the animations. Animations are really uh, the, the objects that do the, the um, changing the geometry, they change the opacity, they change any property. Because basically what they do is that they can act on any um, on any Q property. And so by default, for every widget or every top level widget, you have for example window opacity, you have the geometry. So you can directly use this animation even outside of Qt. That's why it's possible to put it on labs and not put it inside Qt in the first place. So you can just add properties to your objects and, uh, and, uh, and be able to animate that. So one thing is that it completely abstracts uh, the, the timer and, and timer event. Because before that, you had to use timers and timer events. And then in the timer event, you would have to, to simply uh, change a property or change something on your on your object. So that's completely abstracted. Now what you have is that you have your object you, and you create a queue animation on a specified properties. 
a good thing with that is also it's uh, completely synchronized because as we completely abstract the timer and timer event, you don't have at all to use timers or timeline or whatever. They are synchronized. Uh, it will be possible also to, to set the timer interval. By default, uh, it does that 60 times per second, but that's something uh, we will we'll probably change until then. Um, so for all those animations, we have a base class, which is uh, QAbstract Animation. Uh, QAbstract Animation is just a base class for two subclasses. One is QAnimation. I'll talk about it later on a little bit more in detail. And the other one is uh, the Q animation group. I'll also talk about it la later on. The basic thing is that this abstract class gives you uh, really the control over all the timing and it also has the basic controls. You can start, stop um, this animation, abstract animation, and you get signals when it's started, when it's stopped, when it's finished. So finished is uh, when it actually reaches its end, so its end duration. And, uh, and stop is if somebody actually called stop. Uh, when you start an animation, um, if you want to have like a single shot animation, you can also uh, use a parameter to start that will tell the animation framework that the animation should be deleted uh, when it's finished. I'll show you that in, in, uh, in examples. So you have basically uh, uh, properties also for this abstract animation to summarize a little bit so you have if, if that's time you can see it goes from the left to the right uh, you always have a duration duration is defined um, specifically for animation or animation group I'll talk about that later on but basically you, when you have an animation it has a duration so you go just from the start, which is time zero in your animation, until duration. You might have a loop count, so you can, for example, loop twice on your animation, or animation group. And you always have a current time, so you always know where you are inside your animation. Uh, this current time always returns something between zero and duration. So even if, you're, uh, if your uh, animation lasts for, uh, has a duration of one second and a loop count of two, meaning that it will actually last two seconds, the current time will always give you the time inside the current loop, so always between zero and duration. So the first subclass, the, the most interesting one, is the queue animation. As I said before, it works on queue objects because it's based on queue properties and as it works on queue object it also works on queue widgets it also works on graphics item it's just uh, something that's queue variant based so that you can define that your target value for this animation as a queue variant uh, it's very uh, easy to understand why it's queue variant because queue property in queue are also queue variant and that allows you to pass anything basically into your into your animation <coughs> so you you always have a target value because you always need to know where your animation is going you can specify a start value but you're not uh, forced to do that because for example if you want to animate uh, the position of an object to uh, 100 100 you don't really need to know uh, the start value inside the animation because the, the widget already has a value for its position so if you just specify the target value to be a position of 100 100 it will just take the current position and animate smoothly so that your widget goes into its final position which is 100 100 uh, those animations they also do a linear interpolation for the basic types so they do that for integers uh, double rectangle size, point, etc. So that you can uh, by default already animate uh, the, the default types. It does that also for queue color. Um, in animation you always have a virtual method so that if you have a specific type uh, that you want uh, that you can store in queue variant you can always uh, subclass queue animation and do the, trans the, the interpolation yourself. The duration um, it's a virtual method in the abstract animation, but for queue animation it's very concrete. It's simply a duration in milliseconds and it's something that you can set. 
uh, the default duration for an animation is 250 milliseconds. So I here just have a small uh, sample code for that. It's just three lines. Um, so basically in this example, if you want to animate the window opacity, you could just uh, create an animation. So with new queue animation on your widget, and you can the second argument of that um, constructor is, for example, window opacity because I want to just fade out my my uh, my widget, which has to be a top level. And then I set the target value on my animation to be zero, meaning that I want my window opacity to go from its current value to zero. And then the only thing I have to do on the third line of this example is that I can start this animation, and I want it just to to be deleted when it's finished. So I start the animation and I, the parameter I pass to start is queue animation column column delete when finished. Um, now a special words about animations on graphics item. I mentioned before that the animations work on queue properties. As you probably know, uh, the queue graphics item don't have a property system. So what we did is that we added pseudo properties so that even though the graphics item doesn't have properties, uh, you can still create animation. So with new queue animation on an item and still pass pulse geometry opacity because these are properties that are available in the, in the graphics item but cannot be exposed because they don't inherit queue object. So just for having a consistent API, we, we did it that way. Uh, we also added something for the, the transformations. Uh, transformation, so the queue transform class, is a 3x3 matrix that allows you to, to have different transformations on your items. It's not something that's available for queue widget, it's just for graphics item and, and advanced painting. So you can have scaling, rotations, um, um, uh, any kind of, of really 3x3 three three transformation that allows you to have um, a real at least 2.5D look in your, in your graphics view. So we added properties for that in the, the graphics item, so for the rotations, for scaling, and uh, also to set the center for all those transformations, because usually what you want to do is that you want to set the center for the transformation to be in the center of the item, so that when you rotate it, for example, it will rotate along its center. Uh, as I mentioned before, the Q graphics item animation exists, it's not part of this, and now to, to add animation to a graphics item, if you use the animation API, you should use the Q animation class. Q graphics item animation is just deprecated. So I just took the, a little bit of the, the example from before, those three lines just to create and start an animation, and I have adapted it to the, the item. And as you can see, it's very similar. So in this case, I just took, uh, I just created an animation on an item and I changed rotation angle Y, meaning that I want it to rotate over itself along the, the Y axis. And the target value is 360. So it will, it's, it's just supposed to, to turn around basically. And again, I start the animation with the delete when finished. Uh, parameter. Uh, as timeline had different time curves or curve shape as it was um, named before in queue timeline, now we have this new class called queue easing curve. So it's basically a property of queue animation so that for one queue animation you can define easing curve. So you can have easing, ease out, um, you can have bouncing curves, you can have elastic curves, I can show you also later on. Uh, there are like uh, 30 or 40 predefined curves, some of them even taking parameters like amplitude and period when you have sine curves and things like that. So you can really have something fancy and, uh, and it really looks, uh, looks um, like if you had um, a physics engine in your, in your application. Um, so again, just for, uh, for the, the sake of the, having some code here, I have uh, this uh, creation of a new queue animation and you can just uh, call set easing with a queue easing curve. Uh, and as I said, you have predefined uh, easing curves around 40 and you, it's just inside an enum. So you just create an easing curve with a member of that enum. 
Now let's talk about Q animation group. I talk about Q animation, which is the first subclass of Q abstract animation. The other subclass is Q animation group. So basically what it does is that it's a container for animations. So um, what you have is that inside a group, a group can be either sequential or parallel. So if you want to have animations that are run all together, and they can be maybe stopped all together, um, <coughs> either parallel or sequential, you can just create a group. Uh, the parameter of the, the constructor is just defines if it's sequential or parallel. Uh, duration. So I mentioned before that the abstract item has a duration that's virtual. In the animation, you can set it. For the animation group, obviously what happens is that as it contains animation, or actually abstract animation, so it contains it can contain a Q animation and Q animation group. The duration of the group is simply defined by its content. So in this example, you have a sequential group, and inside you just have three items. One is a normal animation, then you have a parallel group, and then you have another animation. So the code to create that just looks like this. So first, you create your animation group that has to be sequential. Then you add a Q animation. Then you begin a parallel group. You again add animation. I just simplified the code, by the way, because um, <coughs> it was simple to just call new Q animation instead of calling real things. So you add animations, you end the group, so meaning that you end your parallel group. It's just um, order like a stack. And in the end, you, you again add your, your third animation. And at some point, you will call group start. So this creates exactly this group that is uh, defined here. So now it's time for some demo. So now I still have my uh, my block demo. But now what I want to do is that I want my my graphics rect item, which is by default yellow. I want something really simple that when I click on it, it becomes red. And the way I do that is quite simple. So for my small example, it inherits Q graphics widget, so it's already a subclass of Q object. So what I will do is that I will just add a Q property. So first I declare the member, which is the color. And I will say that by default, this color should be yellow, because that's, that's the, the current color. In the paint, I will just say that it should paint or fill the rect with my color. This way it's better. And I will just declare the Q property, which is a Q color, color. So the property I'm creating for this Q object will be called color. So when you, when you have to define your animation, you just will create your animation with color. To read it, I will do a method, a uh, function that's called color. And when writing it, set color. So I just need to implement that. So Q color, color. So that's my getter. And my setter is very simple as well. There's just one thing that you need to think about when you have a setter like that is that you need to actually trigger the repaint uh, the update of that item so that when you set the color, if it's already shown, if you don't do that, it will not update until you have, I don't know, move, moved it around or something like that. And now what I want to do is that when I, 
press the mouse button, I will just create an animation as I did before. So new queue animation. I'm in the item, so I create an animation for this and on the property color. Then I set my target value for my animation to be red. And then I start it. And as I mentioned before, I want <coughs> my animation to be deleted when it's finished. And so I just build it. Okay, so it build, wonderful. So what I also did is that I removed the, um, the, uh, the, the state changing so that it doesn't get confused. So you can see that when I click on it, it actually becomes red. I could probably also change the duration. Like that. I just need to recompile. And so now the duration is one second, so it's a bit more visible. So that's all transparently done. And so if you want to add something, you just add the queue property and a getter and a setter and for a simple thing it's, it's very easy to, to add to add an animation. So now if I, if I want for example to <coughs> first make it uh, red and then uh, make it disappear what I would do is that I would add a queue animation group go so I add my animation to the group now I create another animation and this time I want to change the opacity to be zero oops that's the target value And I add again this second anima the second animation. Okay, and I need to create so my animation group is actually a Q animation group, which is sequential, because I want a sequence. And in the end I just start my group. Again what happens here is that uh, the, the the group will take the ownership of the animation so that everything will be deleted when uh, when the, the group has stopped. So what it will do is that it will fade the, the, the yellow into red and then disappear over the course of one second and then disappear. Yeah. Okay. So now the last part, uh, the transitions. As I mentioned before, uh, transitions are just about combining states and animations. So that you have states in your, in your application, but uh, switching from one state to the other one is not really sexy. And that's what you could see with the, the first example I showed you. It switches states, so okay, you can have, you have something functional, but it's not very informative for the user. It doesn't know exactly what happens. It's just jumping around. And uh, it's not smooth. It's not really clean. It's not something you, you would like to have. So to have that, uh, when you create your states, you can actually also uh, create transitions. Those transitions can actually have um, a, a from state and a to state. 
So the, the from state is just the state that uh, will define the, the starting state and the to is the end state. So when you define a transition, you can say that, for example, I want a transition to be uh, available when I switch from state 1 to state 2. Now you what you can also do is that you can say that your transition should always apply when you go from, for example, state 1 to any state. So you can actually uh, say that the, the, the end or the to state is null, in which case it means any. And you can also have, of course, transitions uh, that have no from state and no to state. And that means that the, those transitions will actually be um, uh, executed for every time that you have a state transition from any state to any other state. Um, on the implementation detail, it's not really detail, uh, queue transition is actually a simple uh, subclass of queue animation group. So by default, it's simply um, an animation group that's parallel. So that w if you if you just add animation to a transition, it will simply run them in parallel. So the way you do that is so I go back to my example with the green things. I will just turn on again the, the switch state and I create again the, <coughs> the transitions so what I did is that I created just one transition that goes from 0 to 0 meaning that I, uh, it's a transition that will run for any any switch of state. Now, if I had specified state one and state two, this is what this would have been a trend like this. This would have been a transition only uh, that uh, is executed when you when you switch from state one to state two. But I will stick to my zero zero. So what I did is that I know that for every transition, for my states, for my three states, I I'm just changing the geometry of the four blocks. So what I did is that I simply add a queue animation for every of them. And to make it a little bit smoother, what I also did, it seems a bit complicated in this example, but instead of having them just running in parallel, every, every one of them will have a different delay. So the first one, so button 4, will actually start immediately when you have a transition to move. The second one will, will start just 100, 100 milliseconds after that so that in the transition I just started a sequential group and I added a delay in front of it and the third one will start with a delay of 150 the fourth one with a delay of 200 milliseconds and for every of them I just say that I know that I will be changing the geometry so what I say is that I create an animation for every of the button for the property geometry because the geometry will change so that when the geometry is changed by the state, instead of changing it immediately, it will just start the animation. The animation should last for a second, so 1000 milliseconds. And I just took uh, one special curve, which is uh, out elastic, meaning that it will ease out in an elastic way. And that's the only thing you have to do. Just creating this transition will actually register it globally so that every state knows uh, where, where it should be. So I just save it. And I'm going to run it. So you can see that there are elastic movements for every of them over a course of one second. So you can, you can choose different duration, you can choose different animations, you can choose uh, different curves. You're, you're basically free to do whatever you want.
So to summarize a little bit, uh, I just drawn this uh, this um, class diagram. So I mentioned in the beginning you have states. So the states is on the on the left of this uh, of that summary. So you have defined different states for your application. That could be done by any designer, anybody. And then you have the animations. So the animations, you have the Q abstract animation on top, which is the base class, and then two subclasses. One is Q animation. This Q animation directly animates Q widget, Q graphics item. The other subclass, Q animation group. Q animation group just contains abstract animation, so it means that it contains animation, it can contain animation, animation group, can be parallel, sequential. The transition inherits from Q animation group so that it can define animation for, uh, the, the <coughs> for any Q object and the state will then use those transition and see if they apply or what element in them will apply. Because you can define in a transition that you want an animation on an object B, but if this object B uh, is not actually uh, moved or changed or animated by the state, this will just have no effect. So in conclusion, uh, first thing I would say is that this API is not finished. So it will be on labs. Uh, it's your chance now to, to try it out, use it, uh, say what's missing, what's good, what's wrong. We really wanted something good and we didn't feel comfortable with putting it in 4.5. It's perfectly fine, that's how we do things. Uh, it also gives us more openness because now we're going, we're, we've started of course uh, developing this animation API, but now the rest of the development will be completely transparent, completely public in a public repository. And that's also a direction in which we wanted to go. So we're actually happy about it. Um, you can find it on, on labs. Um, so just go ahead and, and grab the thing, give feedback. It will be great. It will be greatly appreciated because we really want to do we really want to do something great with uh, with this animation API. So that's all. Thanks for your attention. <laughs>